that I'm worshiping you is not because you keep me safe from evil. I worship you because you're God. If I have a reason why I worship you, besides you being God, then that means there's going to be a reason that I stop worshiping you. See, you ain't going to never stop being God. See, that ain't going to never change. And if I'm just worshiping you because you're God, then I'm going to always worship you. But if I just worship you because I pray for that house and I got that house, then guess what? You ain't going to be a worshiper for long because that's not how you worship God. God tell us how he wants to be worshipped. And he said, listen, all you that come to me, you worship me only if I give you houses and blessings and children and wives and husbands. That ain't what he said. That ain't what he said. He said, if you're going to worship me, you got to worship me in spirit. And you got to worship me in the truth. In order to properly worship God, you have to be in the truth of God. If you're not in the truth, then you're not a worshiper of God Almighty. See, Job is in the truth. <laughs> so naked I came, and naked I will return. Read on. The Lord gave. The what? The Lord gave. Read it one more time. The Lord gave. Read it again. The Lord gave. Read it one more time. The Lord gave. Yeah, the Lord gave. He knew everything that he got. He got it from God. All his riches, all his sons and all his daughters, he knew everything came from God. He didn't start catching hell and just give me back my tights. Because of God, I'm broke. <laughs> everything that you got, you got from God. Everything that you get, you get from God. And if he can give it to you, and if he's righteous when he gives it to you, then he can take it away from you. He's God. The Lord gave, read on. And the Lord read on, had taken away. And the Lord hath taken away. Woe unto you that have lost patience. How many of us have this attitude when we lose? When we ain't got no more. At the moment, things ain't the way that you would like them to be. Are you still good with God? And are you still good with the truth? Because God called you into the truth. That's how you show your attitude with God, you know. You have it with the truth. Read on. Bless be the name of the Lord. Read one more time. Bless be the name of the Lord. So wait a minute. The camel, the sheep, the servants, the oxen, the sons, the daughters, and his response is what? Bless, Bless be the name of the almighty God. Some of us can't understand that. We can't get that. I can't, I, I, why am I supposed to bless God when I see my mother suffer? Why does my mother have to suffer? Why? And you're right. That is a good question. It's a, it's a wonderful question. I got an even better question. Why did Jesus Christ have to suffer? Why? Was it because of our sins? Was it because of our sins? If he suffered for us, which is the doctrine of God Almighty, is it too much to ask that we be partakers in his suffering? Because the lessons, there's lessons that's learned in suffering. Anybody that came up hard, they know, they know exactly what I'm talking about. There's lessons to be learned and not having. Not knowing where your next meal is coming from or, you know, at the time when you don't know God. There's lessons to be learned in that. There's lessons to be learned in pain. 
So while we're sitting up there all self-willed and, and about ourselves, why me? Why me? Did Jesus Christ take that attitude? Listen to me now. Did he have that attitude? When God has chose, chosen him to come and suffer for us. Did he say, wait a minute, Lord. Why me? <laughs> Got multitude and why me? Now, actually, he jumped up. He jumped up for the opportunity. He said, how about me? So even though people can't understand this, believe me, listen now. Even though people can't understand this, they can't understand the pain. They can't understand the sorrow and the tears. In the world, we know they definitely can't understand that. Why is it, if there is a God, why is there so much suffering? Because there is a God. <laughs> and, we, and as we get through this class, we're going we're gonna to understand that. We're going to understand that more and more. Tell them where you're at and read that one more time. Verse 21. Come on. And he said, naked can I out of my mother's womb. Come on. And naked shall I return thither. Come on. The Lord came. The what? The Lord came. Come on. And the Lord had taken away. See, when you got an attitude with God like this, God ain't worried about giving. See, the scripture says that the Lord, you, you shall ask and you shall receive, but some of you ain't ready to receive. Receiving actually be the wrong thing for you. You're doing good, but having not. I mean, just look at the examples in the world. They tell you you can't give, the way they say it in the world, you can't give a nigga nothing. <laughs> I'm just letting you know how they say it out there, you know. Because they change. The stuff changed the individual. Are you going to change on God? See, Job was one way when he didn't have and when he got. He was the same way with God. Are oh, you going to change? See, when you show God you ain't going to change, sky is not the limit. Beyond the sky is the limit because it's not going to change you. You can have it today. It could be gone tomorrow. You'd be like, at least I had it yesterday. At least I know what it's like to have it. <laughs> had it for 24 hours, but at least I had it. Tell him where you're at. Read it one more time. Verse 21. Come on. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Yeah, we all got to have this attitude because this is, this is the reality of the situation. We think this stuff really means something. Justice means something, which means, yeah, you ain't supposed to let nobody rob you. Let them get away with it because that would be unjust. But when don't it mean something? When it's either the stuff of your life. Guess what? Take it. <laughs> you're not worth more than that. You can't go get it again. Go buy it. Go buy it again. You got people that give up their lives because they don't want to give up their stuff. Have it became this world, has it become that material? Yes. Yes, it has become that materialistic. Where people are defined by what they have, not by who they are. And when they have nothing no more, being that they defined by what they have, when they have nothing, that means they are nothing. So what's left but suicide? Huh? Suicide. That's, in, that's Esau's life. The rabbi. Suicide, suicide. I lost everything. There's no reason to live. But the righteous man of God said what? Read on. And naked shall I return thither. Come on. The Lord gave. And the Lord had taken away. Come on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on. In all this. Read that one more time. In all this. Read it again. In all this. Read it one more time. In all this. In all this. Read on. Joe. What? Joe. Come on. Sin not. Yeah, he remained perfect before God in everything that he was going through. He remained perfect before God. There's a scripture in the Bible where God tells us, I don't give you a reason to sin. There's no, there's nothing that can happen that justify you sinning. Absolutely nothing. So in all this that happened to Job, 
he sinned not. He stayed right with God. Read on. Nor charge God. Nor did what? Charge God. Nor did what? Charge God. Read on. Foolishly. Yeah. Why are you doing this to me, Lord? You don't love me no more, Lord, 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 Lord. Now nah, you ain't talk to God like that. He stayed with the reverence and respect that he's supposed to have for the, for the Almighty. Did everybody understand that? Now, in the Bible, is that it? Yes, sir. In the Bible, what is that called? What is that referred to? What is that referred to in the Bible? Huh? What is that referred to in the Bible? What is that referred to? I want to hear everybody. What is it referred to? Yeah, that's just not it. Somebody said it over here. What is it referred to? 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 It's called the patience of Job. The Bible calls that patience. Not losing patience with God. Everybody got that? Let's go to the book of James chapter 5. And let's look at that. James chapter 5. So now we started off this class with the title, Woe unto you that have lost patience. We see what patience is. How to be patient with God under every situation and circumstance. The book of James chapter 5 in the New Testament. Crack this for me, please. James chapter 5, and let's look at the 10th and the 11th verse. James chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. Read. Take, my brethren. Read it one more time. Take, my brethren. Read on. The prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord. Who have done what? Spoken in the name of the Lord. For an example of suffering. Of, for an example of what? Suffering. Of what? Suffering. They didn't say why. In the name of, in the name of God, as they spoke it, they said, we're going to show you how to deal with pain and suffering. In the name of the Lord. Read that one more time. Verse 10. Come on. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord. Come on. For an example of suffering affliction. Read on. And of patience. And of what? Patience. And of what? Patience. Read on. Behold, we count them happy. We count them what? Happy. Read on. Which endure. Yeah, we count them happy which endure. They went through it. They made it to the end of it. While they was going through it, it didn't break them. At the end of the suffering, they met God. At the end of the suffering was the blessing, was the healing, was the reward. See, you don't go through nothing for nothing. Everything we go through is for a reason. Everybody understand that? You get hit by a car, clap! <laughs> Ten years later, you needed that money from the lawsuit. You're like... <laughs> Well, I had to get hit for this. <laughs> I can't answer that question, but I know you needed the money. <laughs> I can't tell you why you had to get hit. <laughs> but you can testify that the money came just in time. Some people, they're not able to maintain their primary residence, and they get evicted. They get foreclosed. And they ended up having to gather their stuff, pack their stuff, and move their stuff from one place to another. And then it ain't until when you're done moving, when you're done with your, with your wayfaring travels, that you start realizing that you was always meant to be where you ended up at. And you ain't going to notice, notice these things if you ain't paying attention. Some of you, let me say this to you. Some of you, let me say this to you. To get, so you can get where I'm coming from. Some of you never left your block. Okay, don't act like you're, please don't act like I don't know what's going on. Some of you grew up on the block. Your grandmother grew up on the block. Your grandfather grew up on the block. The block is so hot. That people start making sounds about on my block. <laughs> Like, don't you know there's a whole nother street? <laughs> I can't tell you there's a whole different world out there. There's another street besides your block. You got people that's born and they die. 
on their block. So if I see the world, see it around the corner. Some people don't want to leave their block. Like, where that church at? Where is it at? Over there, 125th? Well, I live in Bed-Stuy. <laughs> I've never been to Harlem. <laughs> well, that family shelter is in Harlem. Now it's close, ain't it? See, when you going through a situation and you want to cry about it, you want to be depressed about it? You want to act like it's the end of the world? You're forgetting that there's a God, God Almighty in heaven that got plans for you. And his plans is not to do you wrong or do you harm. So that means that there's a bigger picture. If you're going through something at the moment, there's something bigger than that that God is preparing for you as you walk through that obstacle. But if you never make it to the end of that obstacle, how you going to ever figure out or ever know or have, to have it ever be manifest to you, what was God, what is it that God was planning for you? You broke down in the middle of the obstacle. I could go no further. <laughs> just, just we got. Do you understand that? Can't move on. Now nah, you got to move on. Life go on. The clock is still ticking. Time is still moving forward. What happened to you? You forgot about God. That's what's literally keeping you going. Why are you still breathing? Because of God. How can you forget 